This December update really showcases what it looks like when 343 is all hands on deck for the live service of Halo Infinite. Because if you guys remember, we were not supposed to get the custom game browser or in-game reporting until season three of Halo Infinite. So when I read the Halo Infinite December update and saw that there was a custom game browser, well, my mind was officially blown. Now the custom game browser is gonna be probably the biggest talking point people are gonna be praising for this game, but it definitely came with some interesting choices as it brought in aim assist on mouse and keyboard. They can tell with 343's wording saying that they added in a friction type of feeling that they really wanted to avoid the word aim assist. As you can see right here, this mouse friction while firing increased right here. Mouse friction while not firing increased from just non-existent to 0.4 and mouse friction decay increased quite a bit right there. So the delay time was really increased. Now, if you're not sure what they're really talking about here, Accelerate does a great job of showcasing what this friction does now in Halo Infinite. And it's not even on my mouse. All right, now I'm gonna hold my click. So this is what simulates when you're actually um, like in the middle of fire. Look how strong that is. I'm, Again, right hand's not even moving. All I'm doing is a very slow walk. Right hand is completely still. I'm not even moving my hand. Dude. Dude. So now when you see that, you're probably thinking, oh my God, MAME assist on mouse and keyboard. It's just gonna be crazy overpowered. Everyone's switching over. But take a closer look at this. Okay, so watch when he's not moving and the character is moving in red reticle range. You can see the mouse reticle is not moving at all because this only activates when your mouse is moving or yourself are moving in the game on mouse and keyboard. So it's not like this kind of continuous aim assist thing like it is with controller. Controller, you can just stand there and the reticle will aim for you a little bit, at least give you that aim assist, which honestly, I think it's something that's been needed for Halo Infinite on mouse and keyboard. Probably much like that's the only way you can really do it. Cause you gotta think about this dilemma right here that Halo has a foundation of being a controller game and you have a specific feel how that controller plays out within the game. Now to make it more balanced for mouse and keyboard without having any form of aim assist or the very low friction that it already had in the game, you drastically have to change how the controller plays out in the game, which would ruin the feel of Halo and mouse and keyboard being a new input, what do you need to kind of do to kind of bring up to the level of controller? Because clearly controller has had the advantage. Look at any competitive event, they're all playing on controller. Here's a graph that was posted on Reddit a while ago, showcasing the top 100 controller players and their average accuracy, the top 100 mouse and keyboard players, and they're about 10% lower in accuracy compared to the controller players. But you can also see that the 50 percentile of controller players are lower than the top 100 mouse and keyboard players. So there is a bit of skill gap between this whole thing, but there clearly is an a disadvantage of equally skilled players on mouse and keyboard and controllers. So it's something need to change. And I think adding a little aim assist on mouse and keyboard is probably the right move. Well, I had to jump in and play for myself and it's definitely noticeable, but it's much more subtle than it is on the controller. So the controller definitely has more aim assist than mouse and keyboard do. It's not the exact same thing. And from my experience, going from controller to mouse and keyboard as a player who plays mouse and keyboard in literally any other game besides Halo, that I didn't really feel like it was like dragging my cursor around or anything. I think it's very subtle, but it's definitely there. And I think it helps bring the mouse and keyboard up to like the same level as controller now. Twitch streamer and notable mouse and keyboard player active right here talks about his experience with the aim assist now in the game. He says it's kind of like a mixed bag or he's, I guess maybe he's just so used to playing without the aim assist or anything like that that he does feel like it's a little too strong and a little weird when like the game kind of takes over your aim a little bit, but he doesn't necessarily like it, but he also doesn't necessarily dislike it. It's a little bit of a difference, but also we had a 343 dev that had a response to this saying our goal is to keep mouse and keyboard and controller as competitive with each other as possible. We are pursuing unique systems for each that play into the input strength and expectations. I threw together some polls for you guys to interact with on Twitter and then basically most people were saying that it's a little too early to tell whether or not the gain aim assist on mouse and keyboard in Halo Infinite is a good thing. With roughly the same ratios over here on YouTube with the poll still being active, you guys want to vote on it. Which is kind of where I sit right now. It's not glaringly better or obvious that like it needs to be nerfed or changed or anything like that. It definitely needs more time played with. I think we will need to come back to this discussion in a few weeks to kind of really see after gaining some good time in with mouse and keyboard aim assist 
to really understand whether or not it's something good for Halo, but so far, I'm really liking it. The remake of The Pit in Halo Infinite Imperium does look awesome. I think it's a huge visual improvement to what we had when they revealed it back at the HCS event. And they made some significant changes to the weapon spawning as well as the map geometry from when we saw it at the reveal to what we got in the game. Though it does look like there are some issues with the map that definitely need to be addressed very soon, as showcased here by Shyway. And if you fall off the map in this section, you enter an endless respawn, which we can attempt, but basically you can, just with a regular jump, clear this section, which is honestly a really cool rotation. I'm going to take a risk and give this a try, and we'll see if the spawn point is still broken. But when I was playing this previously, I would die, respawn in the air, and then... Yeah, okay. Yeah, welcome to uh, Endless Death. So yeah, that's a game breaking issue. You can tell that they intentionally put that jump spot there for a skill jump that we added into the game, which is fantastic. I love that change to the pit. But yeah, you can't have that happen. And in case you didn't know, Empyrean, as in the pit, will be added into season two for HCS. And a fun Easter egg that's with Empyrean, guys, is that there's a sandwich on the map <laughs> right here. Just because, you know, why not? You know, in case you get hungry while playing the game, you can just kind of, you know, teleport your way up there and, you know, find the uh, delicious little sandwich. Uh, it looks like 343 kind of goofed when it comes to some of the ranked options in the game. Right now, you can kind of see that right now that the attachment is in ranked right now, which is really shocking as I didn't expect that map to really be a competitive map. And Richie Hines, who's part of 343 right here, said that detachment CTF is intended to be in the ranked playlist. The other detachment modes are not intended to be there and work is being done currently to remove them. Which I would say good because I never really got a ranked kind of balanced competitive feel when it comes to playing detachment. And I'll share with you guys whenever those changes do come into place. While we're on the topic of ranked in HCS, Tasha did tweet out in a reply saying, look for the full roadmap for HCS in January just before before the season kicks off. Now don't get me wrong, having the custom game browser is a fantastic, much needed addition. It's better to have it than not have it at all, but definitely are some issues with it. And Elite Falcon here kind of showcases what we're talking about when it comes to improvement saying, allow players to host their own customs and make it open whilst being in the lobby, not forcing them to be in game for the customs to go onto the custom game browser. Very needed, I'd say, right there, but I think it's one of those automated kind of things you kind of have to allow to be kind of making sure that the lobbies that you join are open and not just dead kind of thing. Also, allow players to take their fire teams into the custom game browser as well and also fix networking issues. As we did think that the ping fluctuations were going to get fixed with Halo Infinite's December update, I noticed it to be definitely reduced, but certainly there, and I didn't really see it in the patch notes at all, talking about ping fluctuation, even though the support Twitter did state that they were going to be fixing it with this December update. Now, if I remember correctly, I do believe that the custom game browser on Halo 5 and also on MCC, only a singular player can join and can't bring in the fire team. So I would love to see this change happen. If it is possible, it would make things a lot easier when it comes to searching. I'm talking about more issues that are still within the game right now, as in the plasma pistol and battle rifle jamming that's still in the game right now that 343 definitely knew about and has definitely had to fix before. Before the update, I would be able to just kind of spam my trigger and the plasma pistol would shoot its fastest. But now when I do it, this is what happens. I'm, as you can see, like if you look at the trigger icon and then look at my plasma pistol, like it's not shooting at the correct speed. If you guys all remember the weapon jamming with the battle rifle that happened with the season two launch, that came with the trigger dead zones. And I'm surprised they didn't remove them because this is a significant issue when it comes to your game. Where if you're firing your gun and it doesn't fire properly, things are gonna get really weird. And to kind of round this commentary back to where we started right here, it's gonna be very interesting to see what 343 does with season three as a custom game browser, which is gonna be a major feature coming in for Halo Infinite. Because we have in-game reporting now, so that just kind of took away content from season three. So it makes me wonder, is there going to be something new coming into this season in March? Which is honestly not that far away, guys. It does seem far, but really isn't. And wondering, like, is there going to be more content, more features, or anything else coming in? Is there going to be anything added into Halo Infinite in a quality of life update? Maybe from season three. Maybe we have, like, forge fixes and things like that. There's a lot of things that can happen with this game now. And it's really interesting to see, like, now that 343 is all hands on deck when it comes to the live service of Halo Infinite, what can they really accomplish? I mean, 343 did state that it is subject to change when it comes to the roadmap that we know of right now. So maybe things will change.
Now, if you want some content to play for the custom game browser nights, guys, check out this video. I've brought the best Forge maps that have been remade in Halo Infinite. Thank you much for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.